This video is a little bit different. We are not going to be making a Minecraft plugin. Instead, I'm going to be having a look at uh, one of your plugins which you have sent or you have showed me on uh, live coaching calls that we do in a Project Orient training course. By the way, to link to it in, is in the video description. And I'm going to be giving a review for this plugin and also helping you understand how I make sure my plugins are rock solid and what you can do to increase uh, the coding standards of your Minecraft plugin. So without any further ado, let me just crack right into it. The plugin is called City Build. It's by a student called Levin. And I'm going to be starting by opening up the POM file. This plugin uses Maven. First thing I can see Inside, we have properties and Java version 1.8 is defined. However, if I scroll down in the my, uh, Maven's compiler plugin, we can see that configuration actually uses Java 17, which is a discrepancy, it's a problem. So this Java version, if I have a look for it, you can see that it's used nowhere, right? So there's two solutions to it. You can either delete this line, which I don't recommend. I generally like to have Java version defined as a property, so I'm gonna set it to 17. And then in the source, I'm going to reference to the Java version using uh, Maven's variable syntax just like that and we have now deleted or we have now reduced duplicated code just to a single line of code and if you know levin wants to change his java version he can do it right in the pom file that's the first thing that i would fix second thing is if i scroll down to my not repositories but to my uh, dependencies right here we can actually see that down below is the spigot api dependency and I generally recommend having this on the top because if I open up, for example, translations, you can see that a tr item method has get persistent data container and it actually IntelliJ marks it as non-existing. And this is because the way Maven imports your dependencies is that in case, for example, world edit has, um, has a, an older spigot dependency within it, then, then Maven will actually prioritize spigot from the other dependency. So the way we force Maven to use the latest version or the one that we want is simply to put it on the top. Let me just copy it. And maybe I can also put the uh, adventure library, the latest version on the top as well. And maybe just delete the uh, spaces right here. And there we go, just like that one. And I can paste it right here, save it, hit the icon, load Maven changes. And just like that, the errors are gone. Now the question is, will it compile or will it blend? So to compile a plugin, I can see that um, the student has set up a package goal, which is actually something I don't recommend. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to clean install. Now you can just go with install. The difference between package and install is that both will basically run all the tests, compile the code, include the dependencies. However, package does not install uh, your plugin inside your local folder, which is right inside your users folder. You're supposed to be seeing a hidden folder starting with a dot M2. And basically what's going on here, if I run install, there is a copy of my own plugin uh, being placed in that folder so that whenever I want to connect another plugin with that plugin, as an API, for example, I don't have to worry about anything because on my computer is automatically recognized. So it, it can save you a lot of headaches and in some cases, even some invisible silent issues that cause massive levels of confusion. So always go with install. And then before install, I like to put in clean just to make sure that the target folder is being deleted before we uh, compile it again, just to make sure that we always end up with the latest code changes. Because again, over the years, I've noticed people not having clean here might end up with some classes that were not properly updated with their code changes. Again, just causes massive levels of confusion. So make sure to have clean to delete the folder and then install it again, as well as copy uh, your jar inside the local M2 folder. Now we're gonna hit okay. And I also forgot to just uh, change this thing right here. So clean install, this is just the name, doesn't matter. Let me see if it compiles. There we go, now it works. And also one quick note, some of you guys get stuck at if you 
accidentally click on one of these lines and all you see is this weird issue you think that the plugin actually has failed to compile which is wrong i always want you to click on the top line in your intellij and notice whether it says build success or build failure if it said build success uh, for the most part 99 percent of the cases you can just ignore the warnings uh, because the plugin has compiled properly that's all we need awesome let's move on to the actual code starting with the translation class uh, first thing i noticed and this is something that a student has also asked on my live coaching call is is he doing the lang code properly so is he doing localization properly my short answer before we even get there we have to have a look at the, like the general code flow the general coding standards and i can see already a couple of code smells so first of all i can see that the formatting is a bit off so right here there's a two lines of space and here there's no space at all so what i like to do i like to have uh, my intellij set to auto format if i go to plugins you can see i installed save actions x and then inside the settings i actually have set to optimize import and reformat the entire file whenever i save uh, the plugin so right now all i have to do there we go i saved it and as you can see it did reformat properly it's just a little you know up uh you, you level up in your coding practice if it's clean and 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 just a well-designed piece of code second thing i see is array list array list so generally speaking in java the coding convention says to use um to use interfaces on when you're declaring fields whenever possible and then use the actual implementation of that interface when you are obviously cre creating a new instance of it so this is the recommended way this is also because using interfaces is more versatile it's more developer friendly right and basically here on this side then you can create uh, a new instance of every single class that actually implements list an array list if i open it up in the java package this one is from vanilla java can see that it does actually implement a list okay so that's that's just a prefer preferred way second thing i see is the table uh, player string and inventory i would never ever go with more than two gener generic types otherwise you just end up going crazy so i just work around the design of the plugin uh, just to have you know the player and the string so the way you could work this around instead of using a table which yeah it coming it's coming from google common collect package which by the way you don't have to use uh, much at all i would just create a separate class for example inventory manager right or i would just store this inside a player cache so i would just go with a simple map storing the player not by the player but perhaps by his unique id and then inventory cache i would create something like that so work this around uh, to get rid of the three different generic types because that's just a confusing hell and it doesn't scale well the code will become super complex it's going to eat you like a monster after a couple of months that's the first thing and that's the second thing the third thing i see is the naming convention so this title is in capitalized letters we typically only use that when creating something called a constant so constant like this and then a constant should have according to the java convention a final modifier and what happens if i do it let me actually click right here and let me try to recompile and it does build so that means that the titles is actually never set from any other class so just to make sure that this is clear whenever you are having capitalized field uh, this should be a constant according to java conventions and in that case constants are always made final that means that you should not change that now for lists and for collections it doesn't mean that you never change that perhaps um perhaps you can still add your own things inside the titles but you just never call you just never call titles equals to and then another array list that's what i mean that's what you not do for a constant and then this one <clears throat> the table the student has said to me that the table is actually being set somewhere else so for that particular purpose i would actually avoid using a public modifier just to avoid people accidentally accessing the table especially if you are making the plugin available for others as a part of your developer api and the recommended way is to actually use get table as a getter right and you can actually make the entire class final like this one i believe that this is going to work and then <clears throat> excuse me when you're having get table 
right? This gives you more versatility, uh, more, more flexibility. I mean, because if this would be, for example, just a list, say that this is a list of string, you either can return the entire list as it is, or if you want people to not edit or delete elements from the list, what you can do, you can call collections in Java, unmodifiable list, and then you can just return uh, that list. It's not going to work because obviously that's not a list, but I'm just making an illustration right here. That's why I prefer using getters. It just uh, gives you that extra level of flexibility. Plus, it prevents people from accidentally calling table equals to new, I don't know, array list in the case that that is a list. So it just prevents a couple of de the developer mistakes. All right. Now, when it comes to the actual language code, so the short answer is this the best way? No freaking hell. <laughs> I'm just going to be very honest with you. No freaking hell. Because first of all, this is hard coded. It's just DE, which I understand is Deutsch, German, and then English, but there is no really a way to add any other language. So I just completely get rid of this. And I just rewrite this. And the way you rewrite this is you watch my free developer uh, tutorial on YouTube, or if you are, since you are a part of Project Orion, or those of you guys that are not, and you want to learn more about making micro plugins, click the link below. We have a full-fledged course. But if you're just getting started, I also have a free coding tutorial on YouTube. And there is a video about files and configuration. So the way I would go about this is, first of all, my friend, you have to go to the resources. And I see that you have an A file, which is empty. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And then I would make a new localization directory. And then I would place the DE and EN files inside of it. There we go. And then I would just make a class called language manager or localization class. And that class would actually scan the content of that, of that directory inside your jar. And then it would make available these different files. And then as a last part, inside your config general, I would go here and I would put the language right here and I would let your customers or let your users um, to actually type in the language just like that. And then you would simply try to load the file. And if it fails, obviously you just post the message. Hey, you can't really uh, load it because the file doesn't exist. The next thing, what I would do, I would change the naming convention. So enumerations, language, destination. This is not the proper way to, uh, to name enums. Let me actually get rid of all the compile issues. So I'm just going to return it back, but please, you know, be aware of what I said. When it comes to this, enumerations are supposed to have namings capitalized and then uh, spaced out using underscores or display name like this one, and then lore like that one. And I do recommend you watch my free video or the one in the training about coding standards because it goes through all of these lists, right? Another thing, TR item. First of all, in Java, this is not C sharp. Okay. We have to start uh, coding. Uh, we have to start a name by small letter, not a big one. Second of all, TR is not really good method name because I have no freaking idea what it does. Okay. So make sure to actually have very simple to understand method names and here just just rewrite it like it does something with the met metadata or maybe it's translate item which is more appropriate it's a bit lengthy i understand people are lazy but that's the way to go about it because if someone else looks at the code or if you my friend looks at the code two years later or just a half year later you're not going to be looking into the, in, into the code with massive confusion because you know exactly what it does okay so do that uh, here same same spiel right here so make sure to change that and then trans obviously this is not a trans trans but uh trans to, to translate or something like that so i would make the names a little bit more simple to understand a little bit more explicit and also this one is a bit weird and it's undocumented so why is it getting only the first uh, why is it only getting uh, the first part of it so i would ch check this code because it doesn't particularly the logic particularly doesn't make sense to me okay so that's the thing that I would do. Let me actually open up one more class and uh, then I'm going to conclude the video. So menu jobs Fisher, it's a menu class. It implements a listener. There's a static void to create the menu and then the set inventory items and then handle inventory click. I assume that this is called yeah, from the bottom. So first of all, uh, the code should flow like a newspaper. So you have inventory click. Well, first of all, I would say on inventory click, just to make sure again, naming conventions are simple to understand and that they are as explicit as possible. And then the handle inventory click should actually be below where it's being called. 
so i would go i would actually post it right here and then i would evaluate whether you're calling this from any other part of the plugin if not i just make it private instead of having this public and then i would evaluate why you're using static so much so this one is a static method public static if this is not being called from any other place just delete the static use private avoid using static unless ex explicitly needed the general idea behind using static is that you can either have like a counter if you have <clears throat> if you're having like a i don't know player cache class and you want to count how many times you've instantiated a class great go with static if you have a utility class make the class final make a private constructor and make all the methods static that's completely fine but generally speaking with these like logic classes i just go with a singleton either or i just delete the static and i find a better way to use that um because this is not a doesn't use like it doesn't look the menu jobs fisher is a utility class i generally would not mix and match static and non-static in a class like a menu jobs fisher just because it's a little bit more confusing right Ex the only exception is yeah sure you can you can have you can totally have create inventory or well actually this this doesn't really create inventory it creates and opens inventory right so i would actually rewrite this to display to something like that again just to, just thinking about like if it's if, if it's very simple to understand uh the first time someone else looks at it so change that and maybe put static all the static stuff to the very bottom of the class and other thing that i like to do what for code structure right and then yeah so this one is a little bit of a code duplicate i try to rework this and maybe i try to have another method that takes in the slot and then takes in the actual items it takes in the language although it's a bit strange that you have the language code hard-coded so maybe that's something that i would delete completely and just keep the language as a config so yaml configuration and then instead of having that hard-coded i just reach in the yaml configuration inside bucket uh, to get the language string that way okay so a couple of things like that overall i hope you guys got the whole idea of what i'm doing i'm trying to make the code readable for first time users because eventually you are going to be the first time user because i forget what i did two three years ago especially thinking long term so you gotta make sure the code is as easy as understand it flows it reads like a newspaper from top to bottom uh, you use proper coding conventions that starting with names labels axis modifiers use of static non-static and all all jazz all source things like that and then uh, the code is just way cleaner all right guys i hope that you enjoyed this video i'm going to be making more code reviews and as always if you want to have your own code reviewed personally or in private perhaps you don't want your code to be on youtube being reviewed so what we have is called project orient is a full-fledged training course that comes with two live coaching calls every single week i'm actually having a call in about 15 minutes so i gotta hop off and help my students and you can come on there and we can look at the code i can actually do a code review while you are unmuted on zoom and you can ask me questions and we can go back and forth and that way i can just help you so much faster so to learn more about that option follow the link in this video's description and i can't wait to see you in the next video thank you so much and take care